Okay, we're back live here. This is Sapphire Now. This is the Silicon Angle and Wikibon's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract a signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle, and I'm going to be hosting the wrap up of day two with uh, Wikibon co founder and CTO David Floyd and Wikibon analyst, big data analyst Jeff Kelly. Guys, day two is in the books. Um, yeah, we had a big day here, co CEOs doing the key, uh, uh, Schnabe doing the keynote, co-CEO, and then they had both CEOs on the, on the panel on a Q&A in front of the Global Press Corps. Um, we had a variety of uh, conversations in the hallways here on the Cube with customers, partners, the ecosystem. It's all about HANA and the cloud is evolving. As I told Schnabe, it's up in the air. He kind of got a kick out of that, you know, cloud and sky, he kind of put it together, real sharp guy. Um, but uh, uh, David, I want to I ask you guys, David and Jeff, what you think of day two. Okay, day one was HANA all day long, and today we heard business value. I think we heard business value as a theme uh, very, very consistently today, um, and their, their starting point in discussion uh, is business value. Uh, they think in business value terms, and that from a marketing and from a uh, ability to get into high levels in the business side is part of their secret sauce, part of their success. Um, I think uh, there is a uh, sometimes an overvaluation of the products they have in terms of the business value, um, and, and some claims which were uh, very interesting, uh, but maybe a little excessive. But the, the fact that they were focusing on that and focusing on getting the nods from the executives in, in the audience, that to me uh, was, was very impressive, uh, very impressive indeed. And uh, it's something that, um, that from the technology sales point of view, uh, other companies should be doing more of. Uh, There's clearly uh, getting c customers to do the talking, uh, getting, uh, getting the business value of their products over is something that every, every uh, uh, high-tech company should be doing more of. Jeff, I made a comment in the Q&A, kind of said, kind of hinting, kind of not a jab, but kind of saying, you guys have been hiding from big data. Um, last year, Schnabe told me that you know they didn't, that's not a big message for them in terms of trying to hype it up. Although he consider ourselves, they consider themselves a big data company. So, I mean, is SAP a truly a big data company? Uh, I think absolutely. Um, you know, big data is a broad term and a broad category of both uh, technology solutions and also kind of a, a mindset. Uh, about how you monetize data and the new data uh, assets, data sources that are coming online today that are now available to the enterprise. Um, so if you look at it that way, there's no question that SAP is a big data company. Um, I agree with you that they're, they're hiding from that term a little bit. You know, we, we hear it occasionally uh, here at this show, uh, again, last year, occasionally, year before that, not at all. So, you know, I think, I think the issue for SAP is one, you know, they are a marketing machine and they like to keep control of their messaging. Um, and so they've decided at a, at a high level that it is not in their best interest to associate themselves with big data. Perhaps they are thinking about um, some of the technological, technological limitations of their portfolio, as David was uh, mentioning earlier, uh, and it's not a good idea to, to kind of tie them to the big data movement, if you will, because once you bring big data into the, into the equation, people start thinking, okay, on structured data, uh, various data sources, they start thinking things like Hadoop, and when you get into that conversation, um, SAP simply doesn't have the, have the functionality or the, uh, the product uh, line to support some of those workloads. Now that's not to say, again, that is not a great product and is not very good at what it does. But uh, once you bring big data into the conversation, you, you really open it up to a whole new, a whole new level. Um, and I don't know if, my, my opinion is that SAP just doesn't want to have that conversation right now. Um, you know, they're, they're pitching very much HANA as the be all, end all. Uh, well, they talk about analytics. I mean, analytics is a big message. Mobile and analytics is huge. But it's too consumer, but, you know. But is it's, it? it's analytics on a fairly narrow uh, platform set of data. It's the data that SAP has, and they're extracting that, and they're doing analytics on that. And they're doing a very good job. They're doing, uh, you know, real-time analytics on that data. But it, it's uh, not the same as uh, taking a fire hose from the Twitter plus a fire hose from uh, or the uh, the uh, web itself and extracting the noise, uh, the fil the. Uh, the uh, signal. signal from the noise. Signal uh, from the noise, that. that's us. Yeah. So, uh, so David, you know, business value, I love to hear the executives, they're so smooth, um, especially Bill <laughs> McDermott. You know, the question comes up, it's total, it's total hard, hard fastball. 
he kind of fouls it off, answers the question, then he pivots directly to business value. Uh, Schnabe did the same thing. Um, that's their, obviously their messaging. Um, when in doubt, always go to business value, take yep. the moral high ground. Yep. Um, let's drill into it, because you had some compelling business value data you shared on theCUBE today. I thought that was really the, one of the highlights of today's CUBE sessions, where your presentation of your data. What it, did you present, and what was the big takeaway from your research? Well, so the, what we looked at was consolidation and virtualization of SAP, and we looked at it from two perspectives. What was driving it from a business point of view, the, the, bus the, the business value of that consolidation of those applications, and what was driving it from an IT and a technical point of view. And uh, we looked at technical first, and there's a, a very good sound case for using uh, virtualization, consolidation onto uh, higher performance uh, servers, onto flash, onto high performance IO, uh, and reducing the number of cores, the number of actual servers, and from that reducing the cost of the Oracle, uh, the cost of the infrastructure, and most important, almost most of the important of all, the cost of the people themselves. So there's a, a clear business case to be made within IT of consolidation. But the real interest is, why are they doing consolidation, not necessarily just of, uh, of SAP, but why are they consolidating all the different uh, versions of SAP that they have in each of the divisions or in uh, the different companies that they have. Um, the, uh, why are they trying to do that? And, and that's where the real value is, to have a consistent view of data where the data means the same thing, where you put the data in, in each of the, in each of the um, subsidiaries or divisions, and that data rolls up directly into that single instance of the, quote, truth about the organization. Uh, truth about the financials, truth about the uh, shipments, truth about the inventory, truth about the uh, work in progress, et cetera. I got to ask you, Jeff, about uh, your opinion on the big data value proposition, because big data has a lot of pretty tangible benefits, and one of the things that David pointed out in his research we discussed was there's a lot of labor efficiencies and obviously operational efficiencies, but beyond that there's new efficiencies that, that get created, new revenues generated, new decisions are made faster. So part of big data is making decisions faster. What have you found in your research around some of these, these new um, values that, that are soon to be quantified. I, mean, I don't even think David probably collected all of them, and there's, new, there's probably some we, zillions we missed, so what are you seeing? Well sure, there's, you know, there's uh, lots of benefits that big data brings uh, on the business side, but beyond some of the technical, uh, technology related uh, benefits like you know, augmenting your data warehouse with something like Hadoop to, to offload some of that uh, data, make your data warehouse perform better and lower the cost. But on the business side, I mean, there's, there's just so many different uh, uh, benefits depending on the vertical you're in. Um, I've done some research recently around retail, uh, the use of big data retail uh, organizations, and there's things like um, you know, dynamic pricing. So you can, you know, retailers are taking in streams of data from you know, internal sources, from suppliers, from, uh, could be market data, um, bringing that into an internal source, analyzing it uh, in real time to make real time decisions about how they're pricing uh, products, uh, either you know, often online, but in some cases even in brick and mortar stores. So um, if you're able to do that, you can, and if you tie that to a particular business goal, then you really have something. So perhaps it's, it's not always trying to find the optimal price to sell the most product. Sometimes uh, your, your goal might be, for instance, to undercut a competitor for a certain period of time. Um, you need to bring in data from that competitor, you've got to bring in market data, and you've got to understand what that's going to do to your bottom line. And it makes sense, and you can kind of turn the knobs and levers uh, to, to, to hit the right, uh, the, the right price point. Um, so that's just one example of some of the business value that big data can deliver, and that's in retail, and we're doing similar research. We've done it in banking, and healthcare, and uh, energy. Um, you know, in, the, the in mobile as well. Yeah, we mobile. Remember we did some uh, research in mobile where we looked at the, uh, the cost of churn and mm -hmm. the, uh, the potential benefit of understanding that churn earlier, being able to mm -hmm. identify the key things that are predictors of that, yep. and put in processes. Uh, ultimately in real time that can be done that. Right. And then of course there's the ad serving as well, which uh, you know, people like Aerospike are doing mm -hmm. the work on, where huge amounts of volumes of data where they are pricing the ad 
right. putting the bids on the ad in, in real time. In real time and related to churn, not just you know, placing what are the most appropriate ads in front of uh, people, but also understanding how valuable those people are. Mm. So if it's mm. in the churn example. Or how not valuable. Or how not valuable. <laughs> so in the, in the mobile uh, churn example, um, you know, yes, you, you may have some, uh, you know, when you, know, when you know someone's about to churn based on previous patterns you've seen in other customers, uh, you could kick off a series of uh, events to help prevent that. But you may also determine simultaneously, well, this is not uh, a customer that's worth putting that effort and time and money into saving. Um, so, you know, it, it, there's, there's different, um, uh, different types of analytics that have to take place and be integrated. Um, so it's just, it, there's a lot of business value that can get very complex, which is why there's so much focus, um, I think, on the services side of this business right now, people trying to understand what are the mm -hmm. possibilities, mm -hmm. what are the different streams of data I've got to bring together, what are some of the analytics I need to provide, how do I actually deliver that, put those into production so I can make those real-time decisions, um, and that's, a, that's often services-led. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of business value to be had uh, across verticals. Um, if you can come up with a vertical that can't benefit from big data, I'd be interested to hear. So I, I don't know if one. I agree. Agri even agriculture could benefit. Oh, absolutely. Day, day yeah. two is in the books. We're doing day two wrap up and in summary, it's business value. Um, and we had this Jim Schnabe keynote, one more product. Tomorrow is going to be Vishal Sikka's keynote with um, uh, the founder of SAP. Uh, Hassel Plotner, and we're going to hear that tomorrow. But you know, so guys, just summarize some of the things I, I heard that was fun was um, quotes, just some fun quotes. Um, business value, we talked about that. Best of breed, but no, it's best but no, not breeding, was a quote by Bill McDermott. <laughs> and great, that's best but not breeding. Best of breed is what they want. Uh, one platform, um, Global for platform. All, for all, yeah. one, one platform, all problems solved. That was a sound bite by McDermott. Interesting uh, factoid, the HANA project's code name was called the Petabyte Farm. Um, that was pretty interesting. 90% of, of the SAP's customers could run in memory on HANA. That was um, McDermott. Um, but then Schnabe off camera, and I was there with uh, Eric Lundquist, who's uh, editor at eWeek, and he and I were, were uh, peppering Schnabe with questions. He said, quote, we have a two year lead over our competitors with respect to HANA. And he said, and he said, and as he's talking to another journalist, I overheard him say, competitors don't like that HANA exists. Um, so interesting, interesting commentary. And then finally, he broke down the revenue, the question I asked during the Q&A session that we streamed live, um, he actually got some specifics. Um, for their new opportunities in their growth strategy, their innovation strategy, they, they're seeing currently a third of the biz, new business, third of the HANA customers are non-SAP customers, new customers for them. A third are SAP customers, and a third of them are, non, are, are SAP customers running non-SAP apps. So very telling, it's really split across the board, um, and obviously, you know, Ariba's the, the big acquisition. Not a lot of, you know, $4 billion, at least when Sybase was bought, it was a big part of the, the, the story here at Sapphire. Ariba's not so much. So, those are some of the comments that I've heard. Any commentary uh, on those guys? Well, like I said, I think the, 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 the one, one platform to, for all your data needs, I think sounds fantastic. And if they could pull that off, I think they would, uh, they would be sitting on a gold mine. Uh, but for some of, the, some of the reasons we've talked about today, I, I, I don't see how that's possible with HANA unless they significantly increase its capabilities. Um, and again, that's not to say it's not a good point product, but that's what it is. A petabyte, a, a petabyte of DRAM is pretty expensive. Yeah, well, I was going to say, John, you, you pointed out 90, they could run 90% of their, their customers' workloads in memory on HANA, but that, would their customers uh, be able to afford it? Yeah. That's the question. Yeah. Well, it's a technical stat. Obviously, they want to swing the big stick in the marketplace and show the world that they got some the power. We've heard 1,000 times faster. We've had some great interviews. I want to highlight uh, and get you guys to wrap, as we wrap up here, uh, talking about um, um, the VCE, we had the VCE guys in here, we had EMC, which is a storage vendor who's done a lot of SAP virtualization. David Fleury, I want to get your perspective first about you know, the innovation, uh, the co-innovation between EMC and SAP. Very, very strong. What's your take on that? Yes, um, the fundamental the, uh, base of that technology is the VCE technology. Um, they have dramatically improved that uh, technology from the original days of just being a service type company and sticking it together to a true integration of parts, putting uh, the uh, Cisco servers, the EMC storage, the VMware on top of that, and the, um, uh, the, the orchestration or management level within that. So producing a, producing a product, and on top of that, 
uh, applying all of the uh, uh, the changes to make that a single unit of uh, operation by simultaneously applying all of the fixes to the uh, server hardware, the storage hardware, the infrastructure software, doing that as a single fix on a three month basis or a six month basis, and then working with their customers to absolutely minimize the effort and risk of putting in these new versions moving towards a continuous improvement model, the, you know, the Apple type model, as opposed to the new release every two years or three years. But they have the legs Microsoft there with vBlock. Do you think they have legs with vBlock? I mean, vBlock has been getting traction and growing. They have real production use cases. What's the net net on vBlock, in your opinion? Well, net, the net uh, at the moment of vBlock is, is it's doing well. Um, I'm, uh, whether, it, the, the key issue to me is, is that a viable model for EMC to continue? There are risks in that model. For example, what would happen if, if, um, if uh, Cisco bought a storage company and then put its effort into uh, making the equivalent of VC of their own? Uh, what, what would they do then? Or should uh, EMC buy a, uh, a server company and, and go into that more and have more control on, the, on that uh, outcome? So making it as a joint effort, uh, I'm not sure that that is long-term uh, uh, viable. Uh, I, I can see a lot of scenarios where that might not work out so well. But the fundamental principle of putting that together, making it uh, lower cost to operate, uh, pushing that into the marketplace aggressively, I think is very good. Uh, that, that's, uh, that is uh, adding value much more significant business value uh, than just the, uh, the products themselves. I am very excited for SAP, I got to say, um, you know, and uh, SAP and the EMC relationship as you pointed out, but all their partners. We, we saw NetApp giving a great presentation out there and um, you know, again, NetApp's a sleeper in all this and I think the non-disruptive operations meshing that they have, you know, planned downtime is what, what SAP's moving towards, that environment where Schnabe himself said, hey, customers don't like upgrades, that's the old model. We're going to have a platform and enable people. This is the API generation. This is what they're looking for. They want to be a platform. Uh, another exciting note, we talked to the enterprise GM, um, uh, Samir Patel, new executive at SAP, a uh, great leader, he should do well there. But most of all, guys, uh, to wrap up, I'll get the final word in here and then we can break for the day because it's been a long day, is I, I am very, and you guys can, can comment as well on this point, I got to say, in following SAP with theCUBE here for this, our fourth season, the swagger is at an all-time high. And so I am curious, I think there's something under the covers that we're not seeing. Schnabe and McDermott, McDermott's always pretty cocky in a, in a good way, and he's confident, uh, and he presents himself well, but Schnabe is very, very confident, and it, it really shows, and so it makes me wonder, um, what the buzz is going on around HANA. Is a shoe going to drop? You know, I know some of the things you, you've commented on, so just, I'm putting it out there. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, do you agree yeah. the confidence is at a very all-time high? I, I think the confidence is at an all-time high. Uh, it is the basic model, though. It's still of selling software, shrink wrap software, or whatever software it is, uh, to uh, organizations, uh, and letting them piece the pieces together. Uh, it's not for nothing that a large number of the people here on the sh floor are service providers of one sort or another, consultants who are trying to add value, trying to sort out how to put SAP in. Um, the, the risk to that model and the risk to the SAP ecosystem is that you get cloud providers uh, with more data coming in from different sources merging in the big data as well as the, uh, uh, the ERP systems, providing a service within a, uh, a vertical that can compete very aggressively on price, on delivery cost, and most important of all, on ability to integrate uh, into the workflow uh, of organizations more succinctly. That to me is the threat. Uh, and if those sort of systems start, are starting now in the, in the garages in Palo Alto or in uh, Boston, those are the systems which in three or four years time 
could mean a, a different level of swagger. At the moment, they have the market share. At the moment, they have the capability, if they judge it correctly, to go into that marketplace. But I think they've got to make more profound changes to their products than just putting in HANA. They've got to make it cloud-friendly, uh, multi-tenant. They've got to go after that marketplace. They've got to focus on providing something with more ability to follow the workflow the customer wants rather than imposing their own workflows. Yeah, I'd say um, you know, they are certainly very confident for, for a number of reasons. I mean, right now they are, we, we heard, I heard one attendee uh, mention to me earlier today that SAP, the Salesforce just has a, has a knack for getting in front of the CEO of their customers. Mm -hmm. they, they're very good at that. They've got one of the hottest products on the market right now in HANA. They're riding, whether they want to use the term or not, the big data wave. You know, they're trading uh, at a 52-week high. They're hot on Wall Street, very uh, much talked about stock. So they have every reason to, to be confident right now. Uh, a lot of things going their way. Um, again, in five years' time, we'll see how that the conversation well, changes. That's a wrap from day two. Some tidbits here. Hana's a revolution. We've asked people about the most amazing things we've seen. Well, revolution, I'm maybe taking some liberties with that. Uh, <laughs> but it's an innovation <laughs> strategy uh, from SAP. Uh, their innovation strategy, as outlined by the CEOs a couple of years ago, is on, on track. Some new, new dimensions that are accelerating the change. That's at HANA and the impact and the excitement that's generating. And obviously, the, the continuous influx model of what the cloud's going to look like. Private cloud, public cloud, hybrid cloud. I believe that's going to continue to be in flux. We're going to be following it on SiliconANGLE and Wikibon. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned for tomorrow as well, day three of our three days of exclusive coverage from the Global Press Center, Communication Center here at Sapphire Now in Orlando. This is SiliconANGLE and Wikibon wrapping up day two. See you tomorrow.